In this video, I'll show you how to analyze variance in Microsoft Project. You know, as a project manager, inevitably one of your project stakeholders is going to ask you the question, how's your project going? And you need to be able to answer that question confidently. So in this video, I'll show you how Microsoft Project calculates variance in your project schedule, and then I'll show you how to analyze and interpret the variance information you see in the project. So let's get started. If you saved a baseline in your project, Microsoft Project will allow you to analyze up to five types of variance. These five types of variance include duration variance, start and finish variance, work variance, and cost variance. The formula that Microsoft Project uses to calculate variance is insanely simple. Variance is the difference between the current value for the task and its original baseline value. Let me give you a couple of examples. The current duration of a task is 15 days. Its original baseline duration was 10 days. The difference between the two is five days, which means that this task's duration is going five days longer than planned. Here's another example. The current work for a task is 64 hours. Its baseline work, however, is 80 hours. The difference between the two is minus 16 hours. That means the work is coming in under budget. Remember this, positive variance is bad for the project, while negative variance is good for the project. So let's take a moment now to see how to analyze variance in your Microsoft Project schedule. In this project, you can clearly see that the project is in progress, as shown by the blue checkmark indicators in the indicators column for these tasks. The blue checkmark, by the way, means that the task is completed. But I see there's a bunch of work yet to be done in this project. If you want to analyze variance in your project, there's actually four locations where you can do this. The first one is known as the Tracking Gantt View. To display the Tracking Gantt View, click the Gantt Chart Pick List button in your task ribbon, and then choose Tracking Gantt on the menu. In the Tracking Gantt View, you'll find up to three different colors of Gantt bars. Blue Gantt bars, such as I see here, represent either completed tasks or tasks that are non-critical, which means they can slip at least some without impacting the final finish date of the project. You may also see red Gantt bars, such as I see here. Red Gantt bars represent critical tasks. Those are tasks that cannot slip without impacting the final finish date of the entire project. And then lastly, if you saved a baseline in your project, you'll also see gray Gantt bars. Gray Gantt bars represent the original baseline schedule in the project. The way to analyze variance in the Tracking Gantt view is to compare blue and red Gantt bars against their accompanying gray Gantt bars. For example, early in the schedule, the Gantt bars are identical. The length of each is the same. But then notice this Gantt bar extends far to the right of its accompanying gray Gantt bar. This indicates slippage. And now as I compare the blue and the gray, I can see there's a lot of slippage in this project. So as you work through the tracking Gantt view, if you find slippage, you might reasonably ask, 
Well, how much slippage is there anyway? And this leads us to the second location where we can analyze variance, which is the variance table. To display this table, right click on the Select All button and then choose Variance on the menu. Drag the split bar over to the right so that you can see the Finish Variance column. For row 0, the finish variance in this project is 26.25 days. That means this project is slipping over five weeks because 26.25 days is measured in working days. Now as we go down through the project, the scope section finished on schedule. The analysis section was two and a half days late. The design section was seven and a half days late. And the development section is currently 26.25 days late. So at this point, if you do see finish variance in your project, you may be wondering about, well, how about work hours? How are we doing on work hours? In that case, we'll go to the third location where we can analyze variance the work table. To display the work table, right click on the select all button and choose work on the menu. Drag your split bar to the right edge of the percent work complete column. The column here that you're interested in is known as variance. So for row zero representing the entire project, this project is currently 160 hours over its original budget on work. Now as we go through the project, the scope section finished exactly as planned. The analysis section went 40 hours over budget. The design section also went 40 hours over budget. And the development section is currently 80 hours over budget. Now you know that if work is going over budget, and you're tracking costs, that probably means costs are going over budget as well. So this leads us to the fourth location where we can analyze variance. It's the cost table. To display this table, right click on the select all button and select the cost item on the shortcut menu. Drag your split bar over to the right edge of the remaining cost column. The column you're interested in, as you might surmise, is the variance column. For row zero, representing the entire project, this project is $15,000 over budget. The scope section finished exactly on budget. The analysis section went $7,000 over budget. The design section went $3,200 over budget, and the development section is currently $4,800 over budget. So there's the four locations in which you can track and analyze variants in your Microsoft Project Schedules. Well, now you know how to analyze variants in a Microsoft Project Schedule. As always, I trust that you'll like, subscribe, and click the notifications button. But if you're a new user of Microsoft Project, I imagine you've got a lot of questions about the software. So I would like to kindly invite you to share your questions with me by typing them in the comment section down below. And if I use one of your questions to produce a video with the answer, I'll give you the credit for suggesting the video. And as always, I'll see you in my next video.